Lana, and I like to make things. So if you're familiar with Critical Role, you will most likely recognize this costume behind me, which is Jester Lavore's level one design. So initially I had planned on making her level 10 design after I finished this one. Um, however, recent episodes have kind of changed my mind. Um, so spoiler if you're not caught up yet, but um, if you are caught up, then you know that they are planning to venture north or have begun to venture north and they have commissioned cold weather clothes. So I'm going to be making winter jester. So firstly, I'm just going to show you what I have planned for the design and then show you some of the fabrics that I've picked out and then we shall make a winter coat. So firstly, and rather appropriately, um, my design for Winter Jester is drawn in my Tusk Love prop. So basically, it's just like a big old white coat with a crop ton of embroidery. Um, and so I'm very excited about um, the embroidery because I quite like to embroider. Um, so for fabrics, what I have here is this uh, gray fur. She described a light gray fur, but that was uh, nearly impossible to find, so we're going to make do with this for now. For the coat fabric itself, I found this faux fur stuck to it. I found this really soft white, kind of off-white, um, I don't know what kind of fabric this is, but it's like a baby blanket. It feels very nice and soft. And for the dress, I have just this pretty plain uh, dark blue something with some stretch. I'm bad at fabric names. I don't and finally for the lining i have this really bright like robin's egg blue and that's that for fabrics so let's make a coat so basically my plan um i have this pattern that i use for an aria stark cosplay um i'm gonna just basically use only the bodice part for jester's coat first i'm gonna make a mock-up with some old Value Village bed sheets, and then for the skirt part of Jester's coat, I'm planning on just um, you, doing a really simple circle skirt, um, but making like joining two of them together, so it's a little bit more volume and floof because Jester. It's kind of hard to see in the lighting here, but I have this old serving apron that I wear when I sew, and it's so helpful for storing all of your like sewing bits. Um, like I have a bunch of pairs of scissors in here. I keep my tape measure and my rotary cutter uh, Like permanent markers and water soluble pens. So it's actually such a lifesaver I started by pinning the pattern pieces down so they wouldn't shift while I was cutting them out There are a ton of pieces with this particular pattern But I'm just using the center front side front side back and center back panels The pieces were then cut out and sewn together Okay, so this is the mock-up for like the upper bodice part of the coat. Um, I think it's pretty good. I'll probably add, so th like I said, this was an Arya Stark uh, coat and she's got some like lacing. So I'm probably gonna add like maybe an inch or two um, on each side so I have some overlap so I can do a different kind of closure. Um, but other than that, I think it fits really well and we are ready to cut into some real fabric. All right, so the bodice has been sewn together. Um, so I'm going to try and figure out how to do these sleeves, which she described as bell sleeves. So, Basically, I think my plan is to cut the shape out on the fold of the fabric um, and then the bell part will basically be just like this big triangle shape and then up at the top by the shoulder, I'm going to just kind of have like that classic sleeve shape like that, um, which will then like taper up a little bit towards the elbow and then meet the bell there. Um, so I'm gonna try and cut this out of some scrap fabric and make a mock-up and hope that this works. In addition to this, I also took a few measurements. The length of the full sleeve, the length from shoulder to elbow or where the bell began, and how long slash drapey I wanted the bell to be. All right. That actually worked surprisingly well. 
which I think violates some law of the universe. Uh, basically, it was just a little too long in the shoulder, um, but that's super easy to just cut off. So I think we are ready to uh, move ahead with the sleeves. I thought that was going to be horrible and I thought it was going to take me so long and uh, yeah, that was lucky. I'm sure I'm gonna pay for how easy that was somewhere else in this project, but until then. Okay, a little note about the sleeve pattern. So when I uh, took in the extra large bit at the shoulder, um, it ended up being this pink line, but then the shape wasn't right. Like this is a pretty classic sleeve shape, that like S shape at the top. So that's what we were expecting. Oh, uh, there's a cat there now because I put fabric on the floor. But anyway, um, so this pink line is initially what um, what the pattern was going to look like, but uh, then I decided that that doesn't work. So basically I went back to the original purple line and ended up just taking in a little bit of the extra space um, from this seam here. But to summarize, I kept the S curve at the top there and then just took out some of the um, extra width down here. So our sleeves are now sewn on. Um, everything looks a little bit like a house coat right now, uh, but here's hoping that when all is said and done, it does not look like a house coat anymore. Um, so up next, I think I'm going to work on the skirt part. So I did not have enough fabric to uh, do the two circle skirt idea, um, but I'm hoping that this full circle skirt will be enough. Um, so yeah, the skirt is attached and this is coming together way more quickly than I thought it was going to. So I guess next would be uh, cutting out the lining or starting on the embroidery. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that for now. Okay, so I embroidered a few flowers. Uh, I don't like how it looks, so I'm changing my mind. So instead of just um, embroidering them on the canvas and then cutting them out and stitching them down, what I'm going to do instead is use this blue um, fabric that I got for the lining as kind of a trim. So I'm actually going to just embroider this trim um, instead and then attach it to the coat and I think that'll be kind of nicer because it's just a lot of white coat at the moment. So I think we're gonna go with with the uh, blue option. All of the trim and lining pieces were surged first to prevent fraying. I used the hood from my level 1 Jester capelet as a pattern for this hood. The capelet hood was traced from an existing hoodie, which I made a bit bigger to accommodate those tiefling horns. I added a bit of space for seam allowance in the white fabric and a bit more space in the blue to account for surging. I decided to quilt the hood lining to add a bit more visual interest. This fabric was prone to being the worst, so I turned the tension way down on my machine and pulled the fabric taut as I went, which seemed to help. The pen I used to draw the grid is a heat erasable one, so it can be removed with a hairdryer, but I don't actually own a hairdryer, so like a good little cosplayer, I am using my heat gun. For the faux fur trim, I cut out 4 inch wide strips, then sewed them together along the long edge with a zigzag stitch, which is a tip I learned from fellow Jester cosplayer Ginny D. In the unlikely event that you haven't seen it, I will link that video down below. The strips could then be sandwiched between the lining and outer fabrics with right sides together and raw edges facing out and sewn. It was at this point that I sewed together the entire coat with the lining and trim, and then I decided I hated the embroidered trim, and then the official art was released which inspired and motivated me to pretty much change everything I had done, so I took everything apart. So a bit of an update on the trim. So I have embroidered one half of it, um, 
and the, all that's left is to rinse away the water soluble stabilizer and I decided that I hate it. <laughs> so I think it just looks way too childish. Like, I don't know, it just, it's not doing it for me. So I decided to go in a different direction with it. So what I've done instead is just embroidered everything like directly on the fabric itself. Um, so I first um, used some 3D fabric paint and just drew the designs and then literally just wrapped some floss around it. Um, this fabric is a little bit fluffy, like it has a little bit of a pile. So what was good is that I could um, start stitching and then just wrap around the paint on the front side. And so I only ended up poking through the fabric like every so often. Uh, so it went pretty quickly actually. So at this point, the Vines are done on both of the skirt pieces, and I'm in the process of finishing the like upper bodice jacket part, and then I have the sleeves to finish as well. Um, so they're all just the gold paint right now. This is the other skirt half. Um, so again, the vines are done. What I'm doing now is I've added more paint for there are like some dark. Uh, pink flowers. So I've added more paint. Um, this one's just drying. So that'll be next. And finally for the flowers and the bees, I have this pink lace. Um, it has like little flower designs on it. So what I've done is just cut out little flower bits and I'm just going to sew these on by hand. And then I've also ordered some blue lace fabric and some like bee fabric, like a mesh fabric with bees just like embroidered into it so I'm going to cut out those bees as well um but yeah I think it, this is just already looking so much better it just doesn't look so juvenile like Jester is very exuberant and there's a lot of joy in her but she's not a little baby so I think I'm liking this a lot more um and since I started this project the official art has been released and um, the artist Ornarine on Twitter also released um, some like concepts which I'm taking a little bit of inspiration from as well. So I have a lot more of a direction to go in now and I'm liking how it's looking so much better now. I used three strands of embroidery floss for the vines and the pink flowers. I found it was easiest to poke my needle through at the top of the vine and then poke under the paint at the bottom and come back out at the top. I poked my needle through the fabric every centimeter or so. Repeat for eternity. All right, embroidery update. I have officially finished doing all, I'm calling it embroidery, it's kind of not embroidery, kind of is, I don't know, but I'm just going to call it embroidery. So it's all done now. So it goes from the center front of the coat all the way down. Um, I've also I altered a little bit of the pattern pieces um, since the official art was released, um, it kind of has like a higher, almost like an empire waistline. And I didn't really want that all the way around. So I just um, took it up in the front and then it's like a regular level of waist in the back. Um, but the embroidery goes all the way around the bottom of the skirt and up the center front and along the bottom of the sleeves. And um, since the concept art pieces were released, I really liked the look. She has kind of like a puff sleeve um, on the top and then on the top of the sleeve and then just the regular bell sleeves below. And I really liked that. So what I'm gonna do is a over sleeve, like a little short um, mini puff sleeve over top. And so I have these two strips um, that will be the cuff for the over sleeve and it'll basically be like halfway up the arm. I think that looks really cool. I did. I probably I, I like it. So I'm taking elements from both the 
official art and the concept art. So this is where we're at right now. It's just pinned together at the moment. I have to decide what my next steps are, but you know, update stuff, so that's that. Back again with another embroidery update. So as you can see, I've got the appliques um, like all cut out and stitched on here. So like I said, I just found this mesh bee fabric, cut out the individual bees and hand sewed them all on. And then same with the pink flowers and the blue flowers. So all the pieces are done now. Um, here's the bottom of the sleeve and then obviously the bodice is done and the skirt pieces are all just in a jumbled mess right here. So the next thing to do would be to, well firstly I actually have to take the sleeves off because I want to add that little puffed half sleeve so I actually have to take them off and then add the puff sleeve and then sew the long sleeve back in um, and then I'll add the cuff to the bottom of the puff sleeve. So the next thing I have to do is to sew in the lining and the trim, which I have been procrastinating like crazy. So much so that I made a leg warmer. <laughs> um, this actually came together really quickly. I am not a knitter, um, so I'm actually quite impressed that that... Oh, so I'm quite impressed that this actually worked um, because up until like last week I had only done excuse me sir up until last week I had only done like a stockingette knit stitch and obviously like this has knitting and purling which was totally new to me I also started knitting um, with the thread on my or the yarn on my left hand instead of my right which I believe is like picking versus throwing which I had never heard of before and it's so much faster I highly recommend but uh yeah this is what we came up with it's a little messy I'm oh sorry. I'm working on the second one and hoping that it comes out maybe a little cleaner than this one um he's claimed it as it as his bed now uh but yeah I'm working on the second um but I think today I'm actually going to finish the coat. And the final update for now is that I purchased a different fabric for the tunic. Um, since the official artwork was released I had a lot more of a direction to go in. Um, so I found this on Etsy. I love Etsy because you get like little handwritten thank you cards. It's so cute. I just I just adore it. So anyway I bought this um, light blue linen. It's like a little less blue than I was hoping for. But, um, I mean, it's going to be under the coat anyway, you'll barely see it, um, and I'll just wear it with uh, skirts in the future. Cat shadow. Um, so that is where we're at right now. We have one more leg warmer to finish. We have the tunic to fully make, and we have the coat to assemble, but all of the pieces are there, um, and all of them have detail, which took a long time, but uh, I'm glad it's done. So I'm very excited about um, the embroidery because I quite like to embroider. So it's just, we're in the home stretch right now. Instead of sandwiching the fur trim between the coat and lining layers this time, I first sewed it to just the coat. This was much easier to handle in the long run. Good, another little update here. The sleeves, like the over sleeves, are attached. I just have to finish hemming the inside seam there. Uh, the fur trim is all attached. You guys, she's looking really cute. Um, so now what's left to do is sew in the lining, um, which unfortunately I'm thinking I have to do by hand. So that's fun. Um, yeah, but. This is where we're at right now. Lining is next. I don't have any footage of the lining actually being sewn in, but basically I flatlined the skirt pieces and then sewed them to the bodice, and then used the bagging out method for sewing in the bodice lining. The coat clasps were next, and I just weathered these with a bit of black paint so they wouldn't look so shiny. Here's what they look like before and after painting.
So here is the finished coat. Um, yeah, everything does up with like these little coat clasps in the front. In the back here, I added a slit for her tail. Um, the tunic, I was planning on filming a tutorial for it and I started filming it and then I realized it was basically a shot for shot remake of Bernadette Banner's pirate shirt video. So instead of plagiarizing hers, I will just link her video down below. I also got some really helpful tips from Morgan Donner, which I will again add um, a link to in the description. Um, naturally, both of those involved a lot more machine sewing on my end, but uh, yeah, still works, still works. Um, so that is everything for now. I was waiting for a snowy day in which to take pictures and I have not been blessed with such a thing, sadly. So that's going to have to wait. Um, and as for the final costume reveal, I think that'll have to wait as well because I'm waiting for snow. I don't really want to paint myself blue without a purpose. Um, so, you know, it'll happen eventually. Stay tuned. She's actually fully finished. It's just a matter of waiting for snow. So pray for snow. So that is everything I have to show you right now. In my next video, I'll show you the finished costume in more detail and maybe I'll get impatient. They won't actually wait for snow. So I'll see you real soon.